so in my last talk, which was a few weeks ago, uh, we celebrated Y-O-U, and that was your own uniqueness. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And the, the readings and the prayer were so in tune with what I have to say this morning. And Spirit directs. The spiritual truth that each and every individual is a unique expression of the creative force, the mighty creative force, the one energy of all life, the expression of life created out of the very nature of God, spirit. Remember that God does not repeat itself, doesn't have to. Every single human, animal, plant life, planet is individualized. There is no need for repetition. So we're going to deepen into, we're going to take it further today, the celebration of you. And you know, if you were to look around, you might see this world that appears to be in trouble. Everywhere we look, a system, whether it be environmental or economic, seems to be teetering on failure. But then when I was thinking about this, it's always been that way. There's always something going on on this planet, usually caused by humans, but there's always something, and we're in the middle of a lot of somethings right now. It could be, it could be the, the what looks like economic failure, a pandemic that we're coming out of, uh, I'm, I'm claiming, or the horrors of war which we're in, kind of in the middle of right now. I think it's always been that way, but it's, you know, with social media and everything is in your face. We are bombarded by it all. This could be a really frightening time to be around on planet Earth. Or it could be the most profound time in your life. It could be that this is the beginning, which I truly believe, of the evolutionary leap in consciousness that has been taking place, that we have been talking about for 10 years. It is taking place right here and right now. So everything needs to crumble down for us to rebuild up again. But still, like as the reading said, we are the love, we are the light. We are the ones who must be responsible for our own thinking, our own actions, our own our everything, our emotions, every part of who we are. Because this leap in human consciousness is occurring, whether you like it or not. It is occurring. So which will it be? We have a choice. You decide. Every one of us gets to choose. Do we want to live in fear and blame? Or do we want to live uh, in a responsible, empowering manner? It's all taking place within us. Dr. Ernest Holmes wrote this in the Science of Mind book, page 282. Stay with the one, this is so good. Stay with the one, never deviate from it. Never leave it for a moment. Nothing else can equal this attitude. To desert the truth in the hour of need is to prove that we do not know the truth. When things look the worst, that is the supreme moment to demonstrate to ourselves that there are no obstructions, no obstructions to the operation of truth. When things look the worst is the best time to work, the most satisfying time. And this is what we are being called to do right now in every moment of our lives, to choose to move forward and to know that there is nothing more powerful than the spiritual truth, the power of divinity, the power of God. So how are we going to do this? There are two ways that I want to address here this morning. And they are equally important in raising our consciousness. And that's what we have to keep reminding ourselves. That's why we're here on Sundays, to remind ourselves to stay centered in this truth. First, we're going to take time today to continue the celebration of all that we are, right here and right now. And then we'll explore how we can take greater degrees of ownership of our lives and the world in which we live. So first, we are going to spend a few moments continuing this celebration from my last talk that we talked about you 
think about three things about yourself that you have to celebrate. Just think about three things about you individually. Perhaps you've just reached a goal or an award or an, a recognition. Perhaps you've adopted a new experience or received an honor or a more affirmative way of living. Perhaps you've released an old belief or forgiven someone or yourself. All of these, all of these are ways to celebrate who we are. There is no right or wrong in spirit. There is no big or small in spirit. Remember that. And think now about these <coughs> three things that you yourself can celebrate about you. I spoke, I spoke last time about journaling our wins or accomplishments, that's always powerful to do, that we achieve every day. We need to credit, to credit ourselves with all that we do achieve. We, most of the time we overlook all of these incredible things that we go through our day achieving. We, we don't even recognize it. So to become aware of how incredible we truly are. We might think it's an inconsequential act or some kind of experience that is so small it's not even worth thinking about. But I am saying, let us stop and celebrate the many aspects of our multifaceted life. We're amazing. Each and every one of us are amazing beings. And that's something to believe. One Sunday, a visiting minister gave a long drawn out sermon about celebrating all the special moments in our lives. And he talked about his graduation, his schooling, his theology, learnings and teachings. And he went on and on. And he moved through the audience because he wanted to get them involved with his mic on. And he said to one of the congregants, sir, he cheerfully addressed one gentleman. Can you tell us a special moment in your life that you would like to celebrate right now? Yes, came the quick reply. The time I went to church and there was a short sermon. <laughs> well, <laughs> that ended the sermon right there. <clears throat> you ever been to like a Sunday service or a church or something and it's like forever? It's like, really? But anyway, that, that was a joke, so you can laugh. So I'm not, I'm not going to end mine, though. I'm going on. Think back. Think back to all the things about yourself that you are celebrating this morning. And my guess is, with very few exceptions, if any, there, there are two things that you might be looking at first. You took ownership of your life. Remember the time you took ownership of your life? If you've gone through that experience, you know what I mean. It is powerful when you take ownership of who you are and how you're going to live. And the other would be when you opened up and let the divine energy flow through you. You opened up to God, the great I am. That is the other great moment. So let's look at the idea then of taking ownership complete ownership of your life and of bringing good, God, which is good, Emma Curtis Hopkins, good is my God, bringing it into your life and all of your experiences. There seems to be, as I said, a lot going on in the world right now. And it all feels like, and it truly kind of is, but not out of our hands. We can't do anything about bills we have to pay, the mortgage, uh, the banking industry, the politicians, uh, you know, we can sit there and proselytize, but we really can't do that much about it. We can vote, of course. We can't control companies that are laying off thousands of people. We can't control the damage being done to the environment. Small things we can. How, how in the world, then, can we take responsibility and ownership of our lives, when it seems like so much is out of our hands, out of our control. 
Right about now, your mind could easily turn to fear and blame, very easily. You could be starting to feel like a victim of circumstances. When I see the headlines, because I read, I don't listen to the news, I read it. I, see the, I just go through the headlines, actually. And those headlines are like fear, fear, blame, blame, fear, blame. That's all it is. And so that's what we're programming our mind to. So it's very easy, I can understand, turning to fear and blame. But this morning, we are going to move out of that victim consciousness and start, stop pointing the finger out to all the circumstances that are taking place. In fact, we know it's very easy to do, but when we do that, we really stop dead in our tracks and there's no, there's no part of us or no chance of moving forward when we are letting the fear hold us back, hold us as victims, hostages. And there is an evolutionary leap we're holding it back that is trying to occur. This morning, my hope is that we really get this at a deep, deep level. And while we may not be able to control all the outside things, when we blame others and fail to take 100% ownership of our individual lives and our experiences, we give our power away. And we need to to embrace our power. That's what empowerment means. We need to embrace it. But when you throw off the burden of blame and take that ownership and bring God into the situation, the equation, that is when the quantum leap has room to occur. This evolution of consciousness is taking place and it's taking place everywhere. But first, you have to open up and allow it in. Fear and blame, push it out. Blaming is a futile, futile effort. It is blaming your circumstances or your conditions or others. It's, it's really, it doesn't get us anywhere and it contributes more to the problem. And I love, I love this quote for responsible, it's not a quote. I like to look at responsible as able to respond. So taking responsibility to, of our lives is the ability to respond consciously, not as victims. Whenever we look outside of ourselves to point a finger and say, the problem is him, her, this politician, this country, whatever it is, this pandemic, we're blaming, everyone's blaming someone else. We are, again, as I say, contributing to the problem. We're shooting at the wrong target. Too often we try to change the outer things instead of changing the inner. That's what we have, full power. Nobody, nobody can take that power away from us unless we give it away. So we have the power within us to change whatever we need to change in our lives. Gary Zukov, in his book, Soul Stories, talks about how each and one, every one of our lives can be likened to a movie. We are, we are not the star of the movie. We are not only the star of the movie, because we are the star of our own movies, right? I mean, you're the star of your movie. No one else can be the star. You can have a couple of co-stars, I guess. Okay. <laughs> And we are, but we are the screenwriters as well. Getting to decide the plot, the outcome, what kind of movie you are writing, this is all on you. What do you want your main character to develop? Where is it heading? And how do you want it to end? It's your movie. Are you working in harmony with the executive producer? We know who that is, right? God, the divine, executive producer. And do you listen to the director? That's your higher self. And that's really important. Or are you listening to the other actors and the extras, the collective consciousness? And that's what all the news is, and that's what everyone talks about. That's all part of the collective planetary consciousness of humans. 
Blame is the result of invalid thinking. Invalid thinking arises from collective consciousness. And it rarely is ever rooted in truth. In fact, it never is. When we go to spiritual truth, don't leave God out of the equation. If we remember that, there's something divine that I am. I am divine. We are each one of us divine, that we are divine beings of, of the one life. That's what we are. Here's our job then, to develop, nurture, and embody and embrace a reverence and awe for all the good that is positively unfolding everywhere all of the time. It's not usually talked about, but it's happening all of the time. And it, in the midst of it feeling like a world insane asylum almost, it's insanity, all the things that take place. But we again can come back to spiritual truth in our center. It's so important to rely on that divinity within us, the great law of life that's always responding to us. And of course, we might get caught up on the, in the illusions and dire predictions and rumors of ruin. You get to come out among them and realize that you were never caught up in this calamitous quagmire, one of my favorite words, quagmire. Don't you love that? <laughs> After all, anyway, finish, that God always has your back. We talk about that all the time. And when you know that the universe is always supporting you, that God always has your back, it fills you with such security and peace when we truly go to that, when it looks like insanity and chaos everywhere, and we go, wait a minute. I'm centered because I know that the universe, God, is always, always guiding me, always there for me. I'm never alone. The good of God is right where you are, all of the time. There was a story in National Geographic magazine many years ago that I have never forgotten, and I have repeated it before, but I really like this story. It's a metaphor for what happens when we align with the divine. Firefighters had battled a major forest fire, and finally the fire was out. They were walking through the ashes to make sure that all the embers were completely out. And all of a sudden, they happened upon the charred remains of a bird on the ground. This bird had her wings spread to full capacity, and one of the firefighters very gently just moved the body of the bird and found a wonderful discovery underneath. Little baby birds, healthy, alive, and they were kept safe by the mother's wings that surrounded them. It's a perfect example of God's proactive nature as written in scriptures of Psalm 91. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield. So even in the, the midst of troubled times, we can declare with the psalmist, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And you don't, don't mind the gender thing, it's just part of the talk. He, it, whatever it is, is my refuge and my fortress in God, I will trust forever and ever. The Upanishad, sacred Hindu text, write this. One's own thought is one's own world. What a person thinks is what he becomes. That is the eternal mystery. If one dwells on the supreme self, one will experience undying happiness. So what are we focusing on? Because we know it grows. What are we focusing on? What is occupying our mind most of the time? And so most importantly then is to turn your attention away from fear and blame to a loving presence within. Here you will find a centeredness of love, of solace, learning, and solution. You in the problem or the solution? Your choice. 
always our choice. I don't care what I don't care what the situation is. It's always our choice. Solution, problem. Just by sitting with your attention on the inner emotion rather than blaming others, the love you activate for yourself within will begin to radiate out. It's the way it works. We radiate our light out. You ever been around a really happy person? You can feel that energy. You ever be around a, a very sad and always sad and very, very depressed person? It's, it, it can suck the life out of you. So you get to choose to be the light or not. So right now, think of someone or something that you have blamed or think of a fear that you have right here and realize, realize in that thought, in that thinking, that fear is coming from a place where you are placing more trust on the outside world than you are placing on the inside. This is God, right within. This is our divine self. Could you this morning then, right in this room, let go of blame and fear? Release it. Take ownership of your life and lift your shoulders higher. You walk out of here, lift your shoulders higher and just know that you are the light of God radiating out. Just know that. Always remembering that God has your back always in all ways and always will. So my friends, it's your move. It's always been your move. No one ever told you, but it's always been your move. You can choose, again, the out of situation, circumstances, be a part of the problem, or you can choose to celebrate the presence of God within you. The ce the celebrate the presence of God as your life and take full responsibility for your experiences, and you will have your finest hour. The choice is always ours. Let me leave you then with a perfect example of someone who had complete ownership of their life and celebrated it every day. You might have heard this one before. There was once was a woman who woke up one morning looking, and she's looking in the mirror, and noticed she only had three hairs on her head. Well, she said, I think today I'll, bri I'll braid my hair. So she did, and she had a really great day. The next day she woke up, she had two hairs in her head. She looked in the mirror, two hairs. Hmm, she said, today I think I'll part my hair down the middle. And she did, and she had a really great day. The next day she woke up and there was only one hair on her head. And she goes, well, this is going to be easy. And she threw it back in a ponytail. <laughs> and she had a really great day. The next day she woke up and she looked in the mirror and there was no hair on her head. And she said, she declared, well, yay, this is a great day. I don't have to do anything with my hair. And she went off and had a magnificent day. She got to choose. So my friends, with that in mind, I invite you to start celebrating you, to really celebrate you, empower yourself, align with the divine. Go within and learn how to take responsibility for every single thing in your life, every thought, every emotion, every part of it, but do it in a loving way. And always, always, always remember that God does have your back. This universal love will always guide you, embrace you, with this, with this loving presence, it will always happen. It's the way it is. It's what I believe, and it's what I know most of you believe. And so I leave you with that, and so it is. And so it is.